you can't see. Okay, we're recording now. So um, let me just see. All right. All right, we'll get started. It's 8.04. So thank you all for coming to today's Thermomix virtual demo. Just one second, make sure you guys are on mute. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, feel free to come off mute and ask a question at any time. Just if you do come off mute, just remember to go back on mute because uh, then we'll be able to hear everything that's going on in your house. Or you can go into the chat and ask a question there and I'll try and monitor the chat as, as much as I can. But I've also got my lovely consultants on tonight, Elia, Val and Paula, who will be there to help with the chat as well. So um, don't hold back in asking uh, your questions because that's, that's what we're here for tonight. So um, I'm going to do just a very quick presentation because we have a few people on tonight who've never seen a Thermomix demo before, um, who've never seen, who are here to get a lot of information from us. So um, first, thank you all for coming. We, um, I've decided on three dishes, uh, three or four dishes for, for tonight. But when you host your own demo and you have a chat to your consultant, you can actually choose from a menu. Uh, an extensive menu um, and you can pick dishes that actually resonate with, with your family. So after today, um, well, first of all, don't, don't make your decision based on what you see today. Um, if you need to see more, reach out to me or reach out to your consultant uh, because there is just so much to see um, um, in the Thermomix that you can't do that in, in one demo. But today we'll give you a really good idea of exactly what the Thermomix can do. So we're going to start off with a creamy tomato and sun-dried, creamy sun-dried tomato pasta. And I've got that already saved um, into the Thermomix here. Uh, we used a program, uh, an app called Cookie Do, a recipe platform. And um, I'll just pop it up here on the screen. You probably can't see that because of the glare. But we're going to do a creamy chicken and sun-dried tomato pasta going to make some lemonade some fresh homemade lemonade some focaccia and a uh, berry foam so that's going to give like I said a really good idea of what the Thermomix can do um, a bit about Thermomix before we start as well so um, Thermomix is made by a company called Volverk and Volverk is a German company and they've actually been established for over 130 years so um, they're really well known uh, for obviously for Thermomix but also for uh, vacuum cleaners and the first that they started making vacuum cleaners and Thermomixes back in the 70s so um, yeah and so this is not the first model of Thermomix it's the fourth model that we've had in Australia and we've been in Australia now for 20, 20 years and we sold over 500,000 Thermomixes in Australia. And um, Australia is fifth in the world for Thermomix sales. First, obviously, is Germany, then it's Italy, Spain, Portugal, and France. Um, and then we have, have Australia. Um, now, uh, all right, we'll go, go on to the next phase because <laughs> this is for face to face thermos. I normally ask, does anyone have any food allergies? But today, that's not. It's irrelevant because you're all at home anyway. All right. So before we start, if you guys could just pop into the chat, if you know how to use the chat on Zoom, what is it that's most important to you when it comes to cooking? Is that like is when you hop in the kitchen and you've got to make a meal, whether at lunch or dinner, what is it that's most important to you? Is it saving time? Is it saving money? Do you need it to be quick? Do you like to be creative? So um, I was one of those, for instance. Or do you also want to save money as well? Is that something that, that you're interested in? So what would be that number one priority? So let me just have a look at the chat. So we have quick and easy, quick, quick and easy, creative, quick and easy. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So it seems like we're all on the, on the same page here. Um, yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that, guys. I really appreciate it because then that's going to help me throughout the demo tap into what's important to you guys at home, not what's important to me and what I love about the Thermomix. I can sit here and rave about Thermomix for hours, 
but the demo isn't about me. It's about you guys and how I can show you the benefits of the Thermomix that, um, that resonate with, with you. So, so thanks for sharing, guys. Another one, quick and easy. Yeah, creative. Yeah, and healthy as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. All right, so we like to be upfront about the price early on in the demo so you can judge the value for yourself. So the cost is 2269. It comes with everything included. So everything that you can see here on the image, there's nothing really extra to buy except maybe something called the blade, which is an optional extra, um, which we use for slow cooking and sous vide. Um, but everything else comes included in that price of 269. And we have several payment options available. So you can decide to pay, um, obviously, in one payment. Uh, you can pay it off in three months. Uh, you do get your Thermomix straight away, but you can pay it off over three months. I can send you all this information later. Uh, and we also have 24 months interest free and we use a company called Zip Money. And um, it's an online application and you can get a Thermomix for $23.69 per week. And another really popular option is joining Thermomix as a consultant. And you can sign up to earn your Thermomix with just six sales in 60 days and you get the Thermomix for free. Um, and currently we have a half price business kit throughout the month of July. So you can sign up um, to earn your free Thermomix for only $62.50 a week. And you actually get that back after you make your, your um, first three sales. So startup costs is zero. So if you want a second Thermomix on your bench or this is your first Thermomix, that's also a really popular option. But if you want more information on that, I can um, get in touch with me and I can um, give you all that information. All right, so we're going to start cooking and we're going to see manual mode and also um, guided cooking as well. And guided cooking is where we use our recipe platform called Cookie Do where we see our recipes here on this amazing screen. So you're gonna see that throughout, throughout the demo. And I'll also talk to you about a bit of the modes and the functions as we go as well, as we go along. Um, so we, we're gonna start, we're gonna start cooking. Uh, now here are the, the modes and functions of the Thermomix. There's around 20 of them. Um, and I say around because I actually lose track <laughs> because the Thermomix is connected to your home Wi-Fi. When there's a new mode or a new function, that comes through um, via a software update. So just like your phone, when there's a new software, you get a notif notification on the screen, and then we find something new and exciting there on, on the screen. So we're gonna go through some of them today. Like I said before, not all of them because they just won't be the time tonight. But if you do wanna see more, get in touch with me or get in touch with your consultant and we'll be happy to to cook something, like I said, you know, that resonates with your with your family. All right, so we're gonna start. So I'm, I'm actually gonna start with the main dish because then that'll be cooking whilst I um, present the other dishes. Oh, I did that too quickly. So the, the, the dishes are here on my weekly planner. So you can create a weekly planner and also the um, this recipe platform, Cookie Do, after you choose what you want in the days of the week, you can also create a shopping list and um, and you can even send that shopping list directly to Woolworths. So how awesome is that? So it keeps you organized, it helps you save money because we know that when we menu plan, we save money because then we're not just, you know, running to the shops um, to get whatever. Um, and you can menu plan with what's in season as well. So lots of benefits to menu planning. And our cookie do just makes it so seamless and so and so easy. So I bought the recipe here up on the screen and I can scroll down and I can see all the ingredients and all the steps. And then all I do is tap on start cooking and the scales pop up. So the Thermomix, sorry about the noise. I got a three-year-old who's running around, should be in bed, but you know. Um, <laughs> um, so the scales pop automatically when uh, it wants us to, to weigh something. And I'll just quickly show you the bowl. That's a Thermomix bowl. And this one bowl and that one blade in there does everything. So it's not a case we've got to take off this blade and that blade is one blade does everything. Oh, and something else I'm going to show you what I have here, which you can't see. I've got this bowl and I've got a couple of knives in here and my chopping board because I'm going to pop in here all, my, uh, all the utensils that I'm going to get dirty. 
So then in the end, you can see the washing up we have when we use a thermal. So it's a really good visual how you can see that it, it even saves you time in that um, area as well. All right. So I promise to pop in here whatever I get dirty so you can see what you have at, at the end to wash up. So the first thing it tells us is to, is to add is some brown onion. So I've just, it says seven but you know, who weighs onion? I don't. So I'm just going to throw in an onion cut in half like that. It actually weighed double, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, two garlic cloves in there. And parsley. So just a sprig, that's probably like five sprigs. But again, you know, what's a sprig? Um, it says fresh basil. I don't, we're not fans of basil, so I don't have it. So I'm actually going to skip that step. So you don't have to follow a recipe exactly. I, um, I, no, I, I can't follow a recipe. Um, it says to add chili. I'm not going to add chili because of the kids. Now, 100 grams of sun dried tomato. We'll pop that in there. So, that was um, sun dried tomato in, in a, a jar that you can get. And 30 grams of butter. All right. Here's the butter. And we're going to pop the lid on. And we now it's going to chop it up five seconds on speed seven. All right. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so five seconds, speed seven, we've chopped all those ingredients. Now, keep in mind, if you were going to do this by hand, how long would it take you, right? Or you probably had to get out a food processor. We know how fiddly they can be because it's a blade for this and the blade for that. Um, yeah, so in the same bowl that we've chopped all those ingredients, we are going to saute in that same bowl. So three minutes. It's already set. Oh, you can't see it because of the glare, but it does set the time for you. Three minutes and it's set it at a degrees and it tells you to go to speed one. Now, what I love about the Thermomix as well, and because someone mentioned healthy, is that it's now sauteing at 100 degrees. And what that means is, is that what's in there, it's not going to get to a point where, for instance, the butter, or if it was olive oil, that it's not going to become toxic because you're over, you're heating it above that smoke point. So that's one of the things that I find really interesting in the mix is that it cooks fast, but it cooks at lower temperatures. So you retain all those beautiful vitamins and minerals and nutrients and so on um, in the food. So during those three minutes, um, what would you be doing right now if this was on, on the stove in your pot? What would you be doing? So put yourself in that position now. You'd probably have to spend her and stir because if you, if you didn't do that and you walked away, it would burn because that mix is actually quite dry um, because we only added 30 grams of, of butter. So, um, so what it's doing now, it's heating. You can see the, the steam come out already, but also the blades are moving slowly. So it's not going to burn the bottom of, of the bowl. And you can walk away. You don't need to supervise it. And you can grab your other ingredients. So I'll just grab my, uh, the chicken here. Now, one thing I'm going to say is I'm not going to put all of these things in my two-wash bowl because if you were at home, normally you wouldn't pre-prepare your butter and, you know, all of that. You would just grab butter in the fridge, pop it in the bowl, butter back in the fridge, right? So I'm not cheating. I'm just telling you why. I'm not going to pop these things in that two-wash bowl, all right? Because normally, like, you wouldn't have this. I just have it for presentation and also because I've pre-weighed everything just to make the demo quick. I don't want to keep you guys here for too long. Um, all right. And I've also got here, normally at a demo, I'll pass this around and, and, and get you to guess what it is. Um, can't do that here. <laughs> but it's vegetable stock paste concentrate. And this is something that we recommend that you make as soon as you get your Thermomix because a lot of our recipes say to add this um, stock paste to your dishes. Now, it's just a mix of beautiful herbs and vegetables and lots of salt. 
because, because it is a concentrate. Now this makes, let's talk about cost savings um, because I think that's really important to mention, especially when you're investing in something like a Thermomix, it's important to know that you can get your money back. Um, the Thermomix really does pay for itself off. And this is a great example. So the stock-based concentrate that we make makes around 20, um, 20 litres of stock because it's a paste, it's concentrated. Um, it lasts three months in the fridge, six months in the freezer. So it lasts forever. And it doesn't actually freeze because of the salt content. So whenever you need it, you just um, scoop it out of the jar and into, into your dish. Now, 20 litres of stock costs two, four, six, eight, eighty dollars $80 because it's $4 a litre, right? So your um, packs that you buy, that all cost you $80. This didn't cost me to make, so it makes a big jar, obviously. It didn't cost me $10. It probably did even cost me five because I keep leftover vegetables in my freezer. So when I want to make stock, I chuck them in frozen in the Thermomix and then the Thermomix cooks it for me and just turns it into this beautiful paste. It takes 25 minutes, by the way, to make. And just there, you've got a saving of $75 just by making stock. Isn't that amazing? Now, and, and the stock just, I mean, it just adds so much flavor to your, to your dishes. All right, so there's that sauteed um, onion, garlic, sun-dried tomato, what else was in there? Parsley. And, and that was it. All right, now we're going to add 500 grams of chicken. Now, when I, usually, when I make this for my family, I usually add more. This is one of those dishes that you can add more and really, um, and it, it really makes a lot. Because I get asked that question a lot. You know, can the Thermix cook enough for my family? Well, I tell you, I can tell you that it does. I cook for four adults and three kids. And it makes plenty. All right, so I'm going to add 250 grams now of cream. Okay, so this is whipping cream, but you could add pure cream. Like it really doesn't matter. It's just what I had um, in the fridge. Now, 350 grams of water. And now every time it asks me to weigh something, the scales pop up. All right, so. Um, I don't have to get measuring cups and all, all these other things to, um, to then, you know, have to wash later. I will pop that in the two wash bowl. Okay. And 80 grams of white wine. Sometimes I make this with red wine and it's delicious. So white or red, doesn't matter. They're both really good. I'm hoping I have, oh my gosh, I only had a little bit left. Uh, oh, I hope I have enough. 82 grams. Well, perfect. Okay, so now, now that the rest of it says to add a tablespoon of chicken stock because that's also something you can make in your Thermomix, chicken stock, and you can avoid all, the, all, these, all these nasties, additives, preservatives, um, and the same with this, you know, like there's no additives, no preservatives. I don't have chicken stock. I'm just going to use a vegetable stock paste, and I do that a lot with my dishes. So rather than having all these different stocks, um, I just grab the vegetable stock, just makes it really easy. Um, and now we're going to set it for 10 minutes on 100 degrees and that's going to put chicken in that sauce. But I'm actually going to do that in the Thermomix behind us so I can start on our other dishes whilst that's cooking the, um, the pasta. So I'll just grab it up on here. And um, for those of you that have a Thermomix, if you don't know this trick, what you can do is if you want to go to a particular step, you just scroll down and you tap on the step that you want and it takes you right there, you know, so you don't have to keep tapping next, next, next to get to the step that you want. You just tap on it in the recipe details and it takes you right there. Okay, so 10 minutes, 100 degrees. And it's put those blades in reverse because when the blades are in reverse, it doesn't chop up that chicken. How good is that? So, yes, it can make chunky meals because that's also another question that I get asked a lot. It's not, it's not an overpriced blender like I used to call it. 
I've got to tell you my story shortly as well. <laughs> how I came, how I came across the Thermomix. I was very anti Thermomix, by the way. Like there was absolutely no way I was ever going to buy this stupid overpriced blender. This is what I used to call it. But I had never actually seen it in action ever. So I was actually talking without knowing exactly what it does and how it could um, benefit my family. Okay, so we're going to go back to the weekly planner. And I'm going to show you now how to make bread. So who loves baking? Who's on the call? that um that loves baking and what kind of things do you bake and we're in isolation at the moment and um we're actually doing a lot of baking <laughs> and one thing i love about baking in the thermomix is that cakes yeah all right um well we can talk about cakes as well and because what I love about baking the Thermomix is you can have that cake in the oven and you just got this one bowl to wash. It's that quick and easy, um, you know, because what does your kitchen look like after baking, guys? Uh, oh, you can't stop now? Yeah, Paula, I know what you mean. Because <laughs> it's so easy. Yes, it looks like a mess, right? Okay, so we're actually going to be making a focaccia. But imagine, you know, what we're putting into the bowl is not savory it's sweet like your eggs your butter your sugar da, 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 and then it's got to go in the oven um try and visualize of how we can do that in the thermomix uh sweet or savory and what we have to wash so actually before we start this dish i like to top focaccia with rosemary and garlic so again it's that one blade that that does it all and we're just going to throw in four garlic cloves and some rosemary Oh, do you know when I brought in this rosemary from the garden and it's sitting on my bench and then I see this spider, it's about 10 centimetre, uh, sorry, 10 cent piece size and it had a white tip. So I carry that in holding the rosemary, carrying it in the house. Oh, my gosh. That was scary. Oh, a little bit more garlic. Can never have enough garlic, right? So I just popped it in. So I'm just going to chop this for... Uh, a few seconds on speed seven. So probably, I don't know, six seconds on speed seven. Okay, so this is my topping for the focaccia. My kids love this. Um, it's part of the recipe called Pizza Bianca. There you go. So it was just a handful. Did you... Um, did you see that it was just, you know, three garlic cloves and a bit of rosemary. And you actually wouldn't be able to achieve that in a food processor. It would just dance around. Like you wouldn't be able to, to finally chop this for you. And if you were to do this by hand, like how long would it take? It would take forever. Oh, I just saw someone mention bread classes. I'm running a bread class in a few weeks. So um, keep a lookout for that. I'll keep you posted because I love, love, love making bread. I make it so often. And that's actually something else that really helps me save money with the Thermomix is um, making bread because bread can be so, a good loaf of bread can be so expensive. I don't know if you guys also have checked the ingredients for bread. There's like 50 on there. Um, we can count in one hand the ingredients that, that you need for, um, for fresh bread. So um, you can also really cut out all that crap that that they put in um, bread nowadays. So yeah, actually with the Thermomix, you can almost eliminate all additives and preservatives from your diet. How, how awesome is that? I mean, and, you know, it's because you're able to cook from scratch. And I, I like to explain it like, like this, you know, our great grandmothers, grandmothers, you know, they, especially mine, like, they used to cook everything from scratch, everything. Like the, we, we're talking about country Portugal, I'm Portuguese. And they didn't have access to a lot of things. So everything had to be from scratch. But it just meant hours and hours in the kitchen, hours. But now with the Thermomix, it allows you to cook like they used to in the sense of there's no crap added to it. It's all raw ingredients, all from scratch. 
but just you don't have to spend all those hours in the kitchen like they used to because I mean let's be honest no one has that time anymore um you know we we just don't have that time like they used to to um to spend in the kitchen because life has just become so busy and we have to pick and choose like where do we want to spend our time and and this is where um the thermix really really sold me is because um Emily my middle daughter was two weeks old at the time when I first saw, saw a thermomix and my oldest was um five years old and but for five years I had one of my aunties saying I you know I needed to see a thermomix because I was so incredibly time poor I had a very demanding job lots of traveling lots of weekend work um public holiday work and it's just I missed out so much on on you know when they were little because of um you know how much I worked and um and yeah and hang on I'm losing track so I added 500 grams of water <laughs> uh, sorry 500 grams of baker's flour and now I'm going to add some sugar and also some yeast so there's two teaspoons of yeast in here and we're also going to add so 30 grams of olive oil There we go, 30 grams, spot on. And 350 grams of water. So every time I need to put something in the bowl, those scales pop up, which makes it just so amazing and so quick. So if you've got one of those, you know, last minute guests that are popping over, and it's like, oh, I don't have a cake, I don't have anything to offer. You can quickly whip up a cake just like I am now, imagine this was, you know, sweet ingredients and not savory. This is how quick and easy it is. So a teaspoon of salt. And now we can mix it all together. So all it takes is 20 seconds on speed six to mix all those ingredients for the focaccia. All right. <clears throat> so let's have a look so imagine again if you were to mix that flour and that water by hand or you'd probably have to get out a big hand mixer to to do this so there we go so 20 seconds on speed seven and now we're going to knead it so this is the kneading function of the thermomix which is amazing so this is what you'd use to bake your own bread um well to make your own bread dough because you still need an oven to bake it um two minutes so we just turn the dial and it starts kneading the bread so two minutes in the film is actually equivalent to around 20 minutes of a pastry chef i'll just pop this aside whilst it's kneading of a pastry chef you know doing this with the dough um that's how long it would take so Two minutes, you can have dough ready to proof, and then after it's proven, you can put it in, in the oven. So yeah, I was telling you a bit about my story. Um, so yeah, I was there was no way I was ever gonna buy a Thermomix ever. And, but it was my auntie who kept saying, I needed one, I needed one, I'm so time poor. Um, and yeah, I wasn't gonna buy one because I loved cooking. I still love cooking. My happy place has always been in the kitchen. Um, so, you know, I was one, I used to say, oh, I love my pots and pans. I'm an awesome cook. I don't need that stupid thing to cook for me. Um, and, but then I went to my cousin's house for dinner and they had just bought a Thermomix and their consultant was there giving them a learning demo. And that's actually when I the Thermomix for the first time and I saw what he could do. And what sold me is bechamel sauce because I used to make bechamel sauce from scratch all the time on the stove. I used to spend half an hour there stirring. And when I saw that Thermomix could do it in 12 minutes, I was absolutely blown away. I left that demo and I, I, I had a consultant. So I gave her a call because poor thing, I had booked two with her and I canceled them because in my head, there was no way I was going to buy and I was just going to waste her time. So I called her, ordered over the phone and she came a few days later, bought the Thermomix with her. And um, when I... I was actually living in Australia back then. Uh, sorry, living in Portugal back then. And um, when 
when I moved back, well, when we moved back to Australia, the first thing I did was call Thermomix and say, I want to work for you. And this is because I was so passionate about the Thermomix and all my friends in Portugal bought a Thermomix because I kept raving about my, my, uh, my machine. And um, yeah, it's been seven years since I've been with Thermomix and it's, it's been amazing. And the reason I joined was not only because I absolutely loved the product, but because I just didn't want to go back to working full time like I was. And I wanted to be there for my kids, but I needed something that was full. And, um, and, and the Thermomix business gave me that. Um, and yeah, it's been seven years and it's been, it's been so amazing to be able to be home. So whilst I'll be chatting away, <laughs> I've actually got a dough that I pre-made beforehand. So it's nice and risen and ready for us to shape into a focaccia. But that in the back is ready. So those 10 minutes um, went. <laughs> and what we have here, let me just grab a spatula, is the sauce and the chicken that's cooked in the sauce. Can you see that? And now we only have one more step and that's to add the pasta to this and cook the pasta in the sauce, all right? So I'm just going to pop that back there and we're going to add 250 grams of penne pasta. You can add up to 350, add more chicken. I don't know if you saw, there's plenty of room left in the bowl and you could do um, more than what the recipe says if you want to make like a, a huge amount. So 250 grams, I'm sticking to, oops, I'm sticking to the recipe today because I made a, a tuna bake and we're making all these things. We have so many leftovers in the fridge. I thought, no, I'm not going to cook too much because then we have too much to eat. Okay, so now it's going to cook for seven minutes on 100 degrees on speed one. And now we can just leave it. All right, so I did make this earlier, so it would have time to prove. So I'm just going to assemble this. Okay, because the other one finished kneading and it looks like that. So I'll get it out of the bowl once I get this out of the way. Now I need to oil my hands. This is quite a sticky dough, this one. So I'm just going to oil my hands and it's really spongy. I don't know if you can see that, maybe not. I'll just bring it around here. Really spongy. So because it's risen, you don't want to handle, the, handle it too much because you don't want to break all those beautiful air bubbles. So just spread it out with the tips of your fingers and like that. So you get that um, typical focaccia look, all the little holes like that. Um, now you want to sprinkle some olive oil on there. Now a tip for focaccia and the recipe actually says this, you can pop this into a cold oven. And so whilst the oven is heating up, the focaccia is also rising. So you get a really nice soft focaccia. Now we're going to add those herbs that we, uh, that we chopped up earlier. Okay. And also typical of a focaccia, let me just wash my hands, is some salt flakes. So I've got some pink Himalayan salt flakes here. That I'm just going to sprinkle on and just poke those holes into the focaccia. How good does it look? All right, so I'm gonna pop that into an oven at, let's see what it tells me, because it also tells me that information. I was telling me everything that I've done already. Okay, so it's 200 degrees. So I'm gonna pop that in the oven. I'm gonna set the timer. Because if you're like me, you'll forget. <laughs> All right, I need to set a timer for everything. Now, here's the dough that we needed before. So those who are watching have really got a Thermomix. You just turn your bowl upside down. And because oh, it's been sitting there now, it's stuck to the sides of the bowl. But we can actually touch the blades. So these blades, they work more on speed than they do on sharpness. 
Um, so you can, you know, you can touch the blades. They're not, they're not at your hands. All right. Now there's a bit of dough stuck around. So, cause this, this is a sticky dough, this one. Um, there's a bit of dough stuck around the, the blades. So I'm going to show you a trick that you do. So when you have stuff around the blades, you know, especially baking, like, you know, your cake batter, your muffin batter, you don't want to throw that batter away. Um, you put the bowl back in and then whiz it on speed 10 for a few seconds. And everything that's on those blades comes off and you can grab the rest with your spatula. Okay. So just grab the rest there. Okay, there we go. All right, so that is our dough. So bread dough, focaccia, um, brioche, brioche buns, they all take two to five minutes to knead. And then it's just a matter of um, popping it in the oven. So how good is that? So lots of money saving here on bread. So if your family already buys a lot of bread, you know, you're going to save a lot of money with the thermomix because, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't have bread. Oh, you know what? Um, it's a lot quicker to make it yourself than to rush to the shops and buy bread because you need it for the following morning. Just going to wash my hands. And we're going to start on our other recipes. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to make lemonade. Now, my kids have been asking for lemonade for a few days because we have an abundance of lemons at the moment. It's lemon season. How good is that? Let me just pop spatula there. One, th one of the things I use a lot is spatula, so that's definitely going in that to wash bowl. <laughs> All right, so now let's go back to my week, and I'm going to pop up the recipe for lemonade. Now, this is an interesting recipe. Okay, uh, let me get what we need. Two ingredients, sugar and lemons. So I've got raw sugar here. This is the only sugar that you need when you have a Thermomix because you're going to see why. So you just tap on start cooking. Uh, you're about to start a new recipe. Yes. Okay. So 100 grams of sugar in there. You can put less, you can put more. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, pop the, the bowl on and now 10 seconds on speed 10 and you're gonna see magic. Okay, can you see the, what's coming out of the bowl? I'll just show you. <laughs> All right. Woo. Okay, so what do we have here? All right, <laughs> lots of smoke, or it's not smoke. It's now, oh, it's going up my, it's going down my throat. It's icing sugar. Yeah, you can make your own icing sugar because these blades are so powerful. Like I said before, they work more on speed than they do on sharpness that you can mill your own ingredients. So think about things that you already buy milled that you can mill yourself because that's where you're gonna save money as well. So things like almonds into almond meal, uh, chocolate into chocolate powder, um, chickpeas into chickpea flour, your flours, your wheat grain into wholemeal flour. So, cause if you have a look at the price per kilo of the raw ingredient compared to the meal, the raw ingredient is always a lot cheaper. And let's not talk about the fr freshness as well that you get from freshly milled ingredients, right? And just here, sugar compared to raw to icing sugar, there's a big difference in price. So you just smell what you need. You know how sometimes you just need a bit to sprinkle on cake? Um, you just smell what you need, sprinkle, and then you don't have to have all these different sugars in the pantry as well. Because especially with icing sugar, if you don't use it all very soon, it goes rock hard, doesn't it? You've got to chuck it in the bin and you're just throwing money away. So, yeah, uh, lemons. So... These are lemons that I've just cut in quarters. So the seeds are still there. I have not peeled these lemons. Just going in like that. It says two, I'm adding three because we really like it lemony. And now we're going to add, whoops, hang on, uh, 500 grams of water. No, oh, I kept saying, hang on. Okay. 
Que acocha, gotcha. Hang on. Oh, I know what it's doing. Hang on, I've got to pop, pop the lid on. Okay, because it's going to use the turbo function and he won't let me do anything unless that lid is on. So now I'm going to add some water, just enough water to cover the blades. All right, that's all you need to do. And then you, okay. And now what it's done is it's put on the screen our turbo function and it's set it for two seconds. So all I do now is that. Two seconds on turbo. I'll show you what it's done. Okay. There we go. So it's given those lemons a really big chop. Oh, let me get another spatula. So with you guys, I probably I'll just wash the spatulas as I went along. But yeah. All right. There we go. So now I'm going to top it up with more water until we get to the two liter mark roughly because I did add, add an extra lemon because it's telling me to add 960 grams of water. I'm adding more because I added more lemons. Um, and now 10 seconds on speed three. Now she's going to mix it all together. And we're going to need this. So this is our simmering basket. And our simmering basket is going to strain the, um, the lemonade. Now this basket is great because you cook um, rice in here. It's got little holes, but those the, the rice does not come out of those holes. You can uh, cook rice in here. You can steam vegetables. We do have uh, our steamer called the Varoma, which we're not using today, but um, that you can also steam vegetables. What else can we use the simmering basket for? Um, nothing's coming to mind at the moment, but quite a few things. So we just pop it in and it's an awesome strainer. And there is a beautiful, yummy, fresh lemonade. There we go. Beautiful. Now, if you wanted to make pink lemonade, if you've got some little girls in the house that would love pink lemonade, you can just add some raspberries to this and it turns it pink. There we go, fresh lemonade. And it just took a few minutes. How good is that? I'll just pop that over here. Let me just have a look at that. That's cooked, but I'll show you that in a moment. Now, because we've strained it, we have that over now you can't really do much with this someone once told me oh you can make jam with it and that um it's actually quite yucky because um very sour because of the the white part of the skin so let me just um give the bowl a quick rinse and talk about rinsing the bowl i'm also going to show you how quickly and easily you can wash these bowls which we haven't done yet because i'm fortunate enough to have three bowls so i haven't had to uh to wash any yet but i'll show you after we um i get the pasta out of that thermomix okay so now i'm going to show you how to make a berry whip so this is a really quick delicious dessert that the all kids love and you can do this uh this one's actually berries but if you want to use mango um blueberries i'm doing a mix mix of berries um but yeah you can you can use any kind of frozen fruit okay so i was just giving that bowl a, a good uh what clean because let me just get out of this recipe because what we're next the bowl needs to be really dry because we're going to be milling some sugar again okay so now we're doing something called the berry whip and i'm not going to use guided cooking for this because i know the recipe off by heart and I'm going to show you how manual cooking, manual cooking works. Okay, and we're almost done. Let me just see that focaccia is coming along nice. So yeah, manual cooking is great. You know, if you after you become really familiar with the Thermomix and you want to uh, convert 
one of your Nana's favorite recipes or your mum's favorite recipes. Very, actually very easy to do in the Thermomix. And, and when you do that, that's when you would use this, um, these three circles here. This is where you program the time, the temperature and the speed. So the first thing, we need some sugar. Let's grab the bowl here, like this one as well. So again, just raw sugar. And for this particular recipe, I'd say you wouldn't even have to add sugar if you didn't want to. Now, I am going to activate the scale. So I swipe. It's very hard to see it like that, isn't it? When I swipe to the right and to the left, when I swipe this way, I'll get to our recipe platform. This way is manual cooking. And this way is all the modes and functions. And this is where I can find the scales and plus all the other modes and functions that, that we have, like the turbo, the pre-clean, the blending, the dough function. It's got an egg boiler function, warming up function, thickening function, rice cooker, fermentation to make your own yogurt. That's another huge money saver. Cycle here and sous vide. So this is where you can see all the functions of the thermomix. So we want the scales. I'm going to on the scales there and I'm going to weigh in uh, 100 grams of sugar. All right. And again, I'm going to mill that to a nice powder. So seconds on speed 10. Okay, that's done. Now I've got my mix, my frozen mixed berries here. I can't wait to show you one of my favorite chips of when I make this um, berry mousse or berry whip. So there's our, um, our icing sugar again. So again, I'm just gonna grab the scales and I'm gonna weigh in 500 grams of frozen fruit. Now I've made this for guests as a dessert and I serve it up with some fresh berries. And then I'm like, you know, I'm with my guests. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go make dessert. And they're like, oh, geez, she's still going to make dessert. What time are we going to get out of here? <laughs> and I'll come back two minutes later with this beautiful berry mousse or berry whip, and I love it. So it is a great dessert to whip up quickly with friends. So now, an egg white. If you don't want to add egg white, you could add um, equifaba, which is the juice of a can of chickpeas. Uh, it's a vegan alternative to egg white and it will do the same thing. Um, what else could you use instead of this? You could use banana, probably not the same thing, but uh, you could also cook the egg beforehand into a meringue if you want it cooked. So say you've got a friend who's pregnant, you could um, do that. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to blend this frozen fruit with the sugar and the egg white for on speed seven. Okay, so that's done. That was about 30 seconds to blend frozen fruit. So going back to baking a bit, you know, when you have to like whip, um, you know, eggs with the butter and the sugar and you're there for a few minutes with the egg beater. Um, the Thermomix does that as well, but it doesn't take minutes. Everything just takes seconds, seconds to do. So everything is just so quick. So you can whip up these amazing things and you know you're not going to spend ages uh, in the kitchen. So there's our blended fruit. And now we're going to add what we call our butterfly, which is our whisking and whipping attachment. And that just goes on the blades like that. And now this is where the magic happens. So cool. So we want about a minute on speed three and a half. And then I'll show you when, oh, a minute and a half, sorry. Take. I'll pop that aside. I'm going to show you the main dish that we've cooked, which has been sitting here waiting for us. Let me grab. Okay, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. Oh, my God. It smells so yum. Okay. 
I'm going to try and plate this really nice so you can get a nice visual. Now, for those who don't have a thermomix and you want to know what this tastes like, let me know because I can send you the recipe. Because what we make in the thermomix, it tastes the same as if you're going to make it on the stove. It's just the whole process is different. This is a lot quicker than if you were to do it on the stove and it's all unsupervised. With the stove, you'd have to mix, you'd have to do all that chopping. Um, with the Thermomix, it, like, it just saves you that time, but the flavor is the same. It tastes exactly the same. So if you want the recipe, let me know and I can it to you. So there we are, our creamy chicken and sun-dried tomato pasta. And um, as I mentioned before, there's heaps of room in the bowl still. So you could have actually done a recipe and a half just add on that half a recipe more and it would have been perfect. So there we go. There is our lunch for tomorrow. So I'm feeling very organized. Okay, I'm gonna check the focaccia in the oven. It's really grown. It's quite a big focaccia, that one. So we have our main meal, we have our juice. Here. and now we have our dessert oh my gosh she looks amazing let me just get another spatula <sighs> and I'm going to plate this up for you so I'm going to show you what it looks like Ta-da! look at that isn't that amazing okay what miss okay all right there we go so this is called berry whip uh, it also, it's also called Fruity Dream. So there's a few versions on, on Cookie Do, our recipe platform. And you just serve it up like that. So it's like a soft serve ice cream. It really has that soft serve ice cream consistency. And so what you do is you serve the kids. They all get their nice little ice cream. And then... What's left over, you just mix a bit of vodka or a bit of tequila and you have a cocktail. All right, keep it in mind. <laughs> okay, all right. So then you can serve it up like that and some berries. I didn't have raspberries at the shop. I love, love raspberries, but didn't have any today. You can sprinkle with some icing sugar. There you go, out your berry mousse. Now, this does need to go in the freezer ASAP because it does start to, to melt. Patrick, do you want one? Do you want it? Okay. Um, actually, I'll have to take a photo first, so you're not allowed to that one. Can you put that one in a container and pop it in the freezer? Thank you. So there we go. So we made focaccia, which is still in the oven. We have our beautiful lemonade, our main meal, and that. And I'll show you what we have to wash. Hang on, let me add a couple of spatulas there. Okay. This is what we have to wash from everything that we, oh, sorry, forgot. And that, and you would have one bowl to wash because you'd be washing as you go, as you go along. So you wouldn't need to do what I did. But yeah, some spatulas, a couple of knives, a chopping board, the simmering basket. That's all you're washing up. How amazing is that? I mean, who spends ages in the kitchen washing up a whole bunch of stuff? I know we have, dish, most of us have dishwashers, but a lot of things can't go in the dishwasher or they don't fit. So, all right. So what do I want to talk about to, with you next before we go? Ah, I want to talk to you a bit about uh, cookie do because that's a really important part of, of the Thermomix. Let me just get rid of these things. Oh, and you'd have one of these to wash as well because that's where you've wrapped your, your dough. So now we saw some of these functions again. We didn't see all of them because there's just too many of them <laughs> to go through in one session. Um, but just, uh, yeah, I want to talk to you a bit about Cookie Do. So Cookie Do is our recipe platform and it's just amazing. I can't speak more highly enough of Cookie Do. There's, over, there's close to 9,000 recipes on there. And we've just released a new cookbook. So when you subscribe to Cookie Do, uh, which is only $49 a year, we're constantly adding new recipes. And not just us, 
But all the other countries that have Thermomix is around the world, they're all adding English recipes. So, but when you get a Thermomix and you and um, your Thermomix will actually come with six months free subscription. So if you're thinking about getting a Thermomix, sign up to Cookie Do and you just go to cookiedo.com.au sign up for your 30-day free trial. So you can start having a look at recipes because you can also then create collections and add your favorite recipes to those collections. Very similar to Spotify and iTunes where you could create albums of favorite music. This is the same thing. So um, $49 a year to have access to uh, close to 9,000 recipes that are all guided cooking. So they come up on the screen on the Thermomix screen where you tap next, next, next all the time. Now, just a second. Let me just add more time. Now, if you're like me and you love cooking, you're, you know, and you're a creative cook, Vita cooking is still really great for you because you can, um, you can change those recipes around. You can add a bit more of this, you know, a bit less of um, because if you know me, you know that I cannot follow a recipe to the T ever. So, so it's still um, really good for me. But remember how we saw also the manual cookie, how easy it is to program the Thermomix yourself because there's thousands of Thermomix recipes online. There's thousands. You just need to Google the recipe and put Thermomix recipe and that recipe will come up and then you can easily program it. So you'll never run out of ideas of what to cook. Who struggles with what knowing what's going to be for dinner? We all do. Yeah. Uh, let me see if you. Um, if you double a recipe, Antonella is just asking if you add more to a recipe, do you need to change the cooking time? Only if you double. Only if you do like recipe and a half, you just need to add 20% more time. If you have a recipe, just reduce it by 20%. You don't change the temperature. You just fiddle around a bit with the with the cooking time. Twenty percent more or twenty percent less. If I do recipe and a half, I probably wouldn't change. But if I double it, then yes, I would change um, at twenty percent. Um, yeah. So now um, you can have as like you know when you buy a Thermomix, normally um, you know not normally we offer the best customer service like you can have as many learning demos as you like um every demo that you see you learn something new you can come to these online they're all for free you can have them face to face with your consultant and also by having these learning demos you can also get host rewards and they're super amazing and you, so you can get um serving warmers we call them thermo servers like heavily reduced you can get the thermo mats as well, heavily reduced as well. Um, we're here to provide with you, uh, you with so much support so you get the most out of your investment because it is it is an investment. You don't want to be have it sitting there, oh, I don't know how to use that, I don't know how to do this. We're always just a phone call away to help our customers really ensure they get the most out of their out of their investment. Um, now we offer uh, as I was saying before, like our customer service is top notch. Um, so you can have as many cooking experiences or demos that you like. We can deliver the, the we can't at the moment, but if when, when we're out of lockdown, if you wish, we can deliver the Thermomix directly to you. We can help you unpack it. We can help you set it up, get it all set up. So when we leave, you're 100% comfortable in using that Thermomix um, on your own. And also cooking classes. So our team in particular offers cooking classes every single month. Cooking classes, master classes. This month we've had master classes where we show you different techniques. Our last one was how to make gnocchi. The one before that was a Greek master class, and we showed you the gala kabureko and the and the bugatsa. Um, so we just we're constantly sharing what we make in our thermomix to inspire you. To, um, to do the same. So it's really great. Um, now, let me have a look. And my husband is eating the um, fruity dream, eating away. <laughs> He'll probably have a second dinner after he sees this. Okay, let me have a look. All right, so the focaccia 
is done. I'm going to show you what it looks like. There we are. All right, now that really has grown. <laughs> I should have spread it out more. But um, there you go. So a focaccia, it smells amazing. Um, just five ingredients, no additives, no preservatives. And this costs about 50 cents to make. I mean, I'm not um, factoring in the cost of electricity, but it was in the oven for 30 minutes. I mean, it's not, not that expensive, thank goodness. But, but yeah, so that's something that, that you can make yourself as well. So if you enjoy baking, baking in a Thermomix is amazing because there's barely any washing up. Now, talking about washing up, let's, um, let's talk a bit of, about that before we go. Um, so there's a few ways we can wash the bowl. My husband was just licking that clean. <laughs> there's a few ways we can wash the bowl. I can pop uh, water in here and whiz it on speed 10 for five seconds or a few seconds and it really uh, cleans anything that's on those blades just comes right off so I'm going to do that quickly and I also add a dash of detergent just a very tiny drop of detergent so this is what you would be doing in between dishes so rather than your second thermomix which you probably don't have or second and third bowl which you probably don't have um, then this is what you do Bit of water to cover the blades, dash of detergent, go to speed 10 for a few seconds. And I assure you that everything that's on those blades just comes right off. And then we normally give one of our customers one of these uh, cleaning brushes. And then you can just, I'm oh, sorry, my daughter's in the way. And then, all right. So, and then you can just under the sink, I'm sorry, under the tap is just do that with the brush and everything should come right off. Okay, so I actually didn't do that, but you can see how everything just come off, whether it's a dough or whether it's the pasta dish that we've made behind us. It is just when you're going from one dish to another, it is super quick and non fiddly. Now that bowl does come apart, you can take it completely apart. Everything is dishwasher safe. You can pop it in the dishwasher and um, and a clean. Now I'm also going to show you. Uh, okay, our thermo servers, which you can get as a host reward, and I'm going to pop in there our main meal because if we were, uh, if I made this before, hang on, let me just grab a spatula. So the thermo server will keep things hot for hours, all right? So you just pour it in there and you pop the lid on. So see how that passes all intact? Okay. And there is our bowl. Now I'm going to wash that bowl as well so you can see, again, just how easy the washing up is. So again, just a bit of water to cover the blades. Like that, pop the lid on and just go to speed 10. And then with having the lid on the thermo server, this will keep for hours, it'll keep hot. So in winter, things like steamed veggies go cold really quickly. Well, actually whatever we cook just goes cold really quickly. Pop it in one of these, it keeps it hot and you can um, score these as host rewards, okay? Um, so there is our bowl. So I'll just give that a rinse. And that's where we cooked our pasta. So I haven't gone with the brush yet to see how easy it is to clean. But that's, it just, it's, it's, for me, it's still mind blowing how quick and easy everything is uh, in the Thermomix. So, there is one more attachment that I need to show you, which is a steaming attachment. And that's a very last thing. So we didn't use that today, but if you want to see more, chat to me or chat to your consultant and we can show you a dish where we use the steaming basket. And here we are. So there's a few of them in there. 
So that will go on top like that. And it has a tray that goes there and it has a lid. So this is where you could be cooking something in the bowl and at the same time it's steaming your fish, your chicken, your vegetables. So there are so many things that you can steam in the Varoma, sticky date puddings, um, citrus cupcakes. Um, the options are endless. So uh, you can really get um, a lot out of your Thermomix because the bowl has 2.2 litres and this has 3.3. So all up 5.5 litres of food. So that's our demo done. Oops, hang on. Let me just pop that aside. Um, so what have you guys liked most so far? If you could just let me know what, because a lot of you haven't um, seen a demo before. It's the first time you, you're seeing one. So let me just come to my other screen. Um, I know the washing up is great, Chris. I know it really is. Like the washing up is always so minimal. Like you, we cook so many dishes and you could see that we just had very minimal washing up. Yes, it was. And it's really delicious. So Alicia, I know you got your thermix. So um, try this recipe, the creamy, uh, the creamy chicken with sun-dried tomato. It really is delicious. Okay. Ah, she's excited about lemonade and the dessert. That's awesome. And how old is your daughter, Chris? Because um, kids love using the thermix because it's so easy. If they know how to read, uh, <laughs> they just follow what's on the screen and kids really get involved in the kitchen with the Thermomix because it's so easy and it's safe. It's safe for them to, she's nine years, I've got a nine-year-old, Emily, who loves cooking in the Thermomix. She loves it. Um, she does lives and everything, <laughs> cooking in the Thermomix. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was just going through some of the comments. Yeah, Irene, yeah, oh, the berry dessert is delicious. And um, yeah, like after you, like you can turn it into a cocktail for the adults, it's so young. <laughs> you just whiz it up with um, some vodka or some tequila. It is so, so good. Yeah, the cleaning, the pasta, everything. I know Irene, it's just, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. My kids love using it too. It's been, yes, keeps them busy during the holidays, doesn't it, Val? I know. Thank you, Antonella. You're welcome. Thanks for joining. And like I said, if you guys want more information, just let me know and um, we can take it from there. We can do another demo. We're all at home now, well, currently, if you're in New South Wales. And um, so we can do these virtually. That's awesome. The berry, oh, the berry dessert seems to be a winner with you guys. <laughs> it's over here. It is so young. I can't wait to tuck into it. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, thank you all for joining. So um, I will email you all a recording. So if you need to show your partner, some friends, uh, you'll get a recording uh, via email. But also um, check out our socials. I'll put a link to our social pages. Well, you'll be able to see the recordings on there as well. Um, Facebook, so my page is called Thermomix Madness. Our team page is called the Blade Runners Thermomix Events. So I'll pop it there as well. And you'll be able to, to look at the, the recording. It'll probably be hard to email because it would be quite a heavy file. Uh, oh, but we also put it on YouTube. So you'll be able to find it on YouTube as well. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks for coming. Thank you all for coming, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you for joining me. And um, I had a great time with you guys tonight. And thank you for being so interactive on chat, which is great. So it doesn't seem like I'm just talking to a screen. <laughs> really makes it awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Oops. Hang on. Got more messages. Oh, the bread. Yeah, where is it? Oh, it's sitting. It's got... There we go. Oh, the focaccia. That with the pasta. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks, guys.
All right. I'll log off now.